Good morning class. Let's have a look at designing a crime thriller book cover in Affinity Publisher version 2. Now follow this class along and design your own book cover. You've written the book, now it's time to design a book cover. Print ready. If you just need a front cover for your ebook or both front, back and spine for your print book, this is your go-to tutorial. So let's carry right along. OK, setting up the layout of your cover. Now follow these steps, as complex as they may seem at first. Set up the layer of your cover in Publisher. In this step we'll be creating a cover for a paperback or soft cover book with B format dimensions. This is a very common format. It's 130 by 198 millimetres in size and it's got a 16 millimetre spine in this one. Now depending on the number of pages you've got, your spine size might be different. But you can, clear, you can fix that easily and you'll learn how to do that later on. Note, you can adjust the width of the spine to suit your own purposes by using the spread properties, the page tool, to adjust the width of the document later. So step one, open Publisher and go to File and New. You can select the print preset to suit our exercise. A5 is probably good. We're going to change it anyway. Do not press Create yet to create the page. In the New Document window, go to the Pages tab and set the number of pages to 1. Then uncheck Facing Pages. Now, step 1 continued. From the Page Preset drop-down menu, right at the bottom, Select the new category item. We're going to create a new category. Now, tap that and create a new category named Custom. It will appear at the bottom of the list. Just click on the new category name to be sure you have it selected. Now, go back to your new document layout tab and set the width to 130 millimeters and the height to 198 millimeters, and select Prefer Embedded. Do not press Create yet. Now step one continued still. Go to the little icon to the bottom left of the Page Preset drop-down and select Create Preset. And in the, in the drop-down that comes up, type B Format Paperback into the name text box and select the little drop-down menu to select your new custom category. Don't just press enter or it'll drop it into the print category. You want to put it in the custom category. If you don't select custom, the preset will be placed in the print category, the one that's ticked by default, because that's where you found the original A5 one. OK, we'll create the preset, and your setup will look something like this. When you're finished setting up, your preset category will be saved and you can now open a new document whenever you like and apply the preset easily. This is the industry standard print size for a B format paperback. Do not press create yet. <laughs> We're keeping you waiting. Continued. When you're finished setting up, your preset category will be saved and you can now open a new document and apply the preset easily, as I mentioned before. It's the industry standard. And you can see it there in the custom list, B format paperback. Now step two, back in the new document window, set the margins to eight millimeters on all sides and set the bleed to three millimeters on all sides. Do not press Create yet. Step 2 continued. Check that all measurements are OK in Layout, Pages, Colour, Margins and Bleed. When you're sure all is well, remember to click the icon on the top right. Notice the little star next to the name. B Format Paperback got a star next to it. That means there are unsaved changes. So you click that little circular thing pointed to by the red arrow and that will save and overwrite the current preset. So any changes you make to that preset will be changed, will be saved. Otherwise, you'll lose them. Now it's good. Now you can click on Create at the bottom of the page. Yes, go right ahead and click on Create. 
This page is the correct size for the front of your cover only. Though we will want to submit a whole cover to the printer, complete with spine and back cover, it's really a good idea to design your front cover only at first. This allows you to judge better how the cover will look from a reader's perspective when the book is on display in the bookshop. You can faintly see the bleed and margins around the edges. We'll use the document setup tool later in the tutorial to include the spine and back cover on the document, but for now, let's work on the front cover alone as it is. Finally, in this section, from the left hand ruler, drag a vertical guide out to 65mm. This marks the centre point of the front cover, which is helpful for when you start to place elements on the page. So hover your mouse over the left hand ruler, hold the, hold the key down, the button down, and just drag out, and it will drag that guide out where you can place it at 65mm. Now, create an icy backdrop. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? This is lesson two. Add a layer, that is layers, new layer, or lower right, add layer, and click in the layer one to rename the layer as background images. Select the rectangle picture frame tool and drag to create an image frame 58 millimeters in width that extends across the page, meeting the edge of the bleed at the top, bottom and right sides. With the left edge of the frame sitting just past the center point of the page, as shown below. Go to File and Place and select a suitable image from the backdrop of your cover. Choose something that will work well as a wallpaper across the back page with no significant features or people in it and also that has a threatening claustrophobic feel. Use the icy backdrop that I've put in the archive on my website and Facebook files page or you might have your own similar design. That's fine. Make sure the photo in its frame is selected as shown by the blue dots and frame around it. Arrange the photo in the frame, frame using the properties icon in the top control panel. The top option scale to max fit is the one that will suit this image. Your image, if it's different, may require a different option. Just experiment until it looks correct. With the frame selected, right click on the object, go to Layer Effects, Gradient Overlay, keep the type as linear and set the angle to 180 degrees. Maneuver the gradient stops into place as shown. With the frame selected, right click on the object Go to Layer Effects, Gradient Overlay. Keep the type as linear and set the angle to 180 degrees. Maneuver the gradient stops as shown and set the opacity to 50%. Now you can see the settings that are there. Click on the gradient icon to access the gradient stops tool. Maneuver the gradient stops into place as shown. Set the opacity to 73%. You will have to adjust these settings to suit your needs. You can see the image on the page there. It's faintly, it's fainter on the left than on the right. Now you may have to fiddle around a little bit to get it to do that, depending on your image. Step 2. Go to the Layers panel right side and highlight the background image layer. Select Duplicate to make another copy of the layer. Select this duplicate image layer and rename it Background Image Left. Drag it to the left side of your page, keeping it within the bleed borders on the left. Select the image frame and right click or control click Transform Flip Horizontal or just go up to the top um, where you'll see the 
little icon there. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh. It's about seventh in from the right on the top. Just click that and it will flip it horizontally. Position this second frame to the left side of the page, mirroring the first image. So you can see there you've got an exact mirror. That's fairly easy to do. You shouldn't have any trouble with that. Grab the left edge of the new frame and drag it so that it meets the trim edge of the page. You won't need to allow for bleed on this side of the page as this is where the edge of the spine will sit. It also keeps the centre of the page aligned. Whereas if you move the entire image to the right, it will not be symmetrical in the middle of the resulting image. Now you can see right down the centre line there, that's exactly symmetrical. And it's unobservable if it's moved in from the left a little bit. Look carefully, you can see the left edge is on the trim, not the bleed. Both images, left and right, meet on the centre guideline, which is exactly what you want. Even though we already have a gradient effect applied to the image, any typography we apply to the cover will still likely get lost amongst the high contrast of the dark branches and white snow. Return to the Layers panel and lock the image layers. Click the Create New Layer icon at the bottom of the panel and click the default layer name and rename the layer as Front Cover Artwork. Click OK. Now we continue on. Click the Create New Layer icon at the bottom right of the panel. Click the default layer name and rename the layer as Front Cover Artwork. Now we're going to get um, a little bit of design work in this. Select the e Ellipse tool and holding Shift, drag to create a perfect circle about 113 millimeters in diameter. Position this centrally on the page, using the guide as a reference position. The top of the circle at position 42 millimeters in the Y position 42 millimeters. That should be right um, if you've got your measurements right. You may have to adjust it slightly. Make sure you set the colour fill to white. Now with the centre circle selected, select the transparency tool, that's the wine glass, and set the type, that's the upper left, to radial. Click on white, eclipse, and move the gradient stop into position as shown below. So the gradient appears very soft. Adjust it to suit your image. I'm working on the assumption you have the image I supplied here. So that's how you end up with your image. Select the circle shape and edit, copy, edit, paste. It will paste over the top of the first circle. Observe in the layer panel. Either hold shift to resize the circle or edit the measurements in the transform studio. Resizing the circle to 44 millimeters in diameter. So one circle is smaller than the other one. And you can see where I've put it there on the top right hand side. Position the second shape at the top right hand corner of the page as shown. We will be layering, layering that's a bit of a tongue twister, a tagline over this a little later. I've selected the circle so they show clear here. Next section, introduce some blood curdling typography. Go to the layer panel and, and select and lock the front layer artwork layers. Add the, select the add layer icon and name the layer typography. Oh, that's fairly simple, even if a tongue twister. We want to introduce three parts to the front cover text, the title, the author name and a tagline. Let's work on the title first. First up, let's select a typeface that's going to work well with our Winter Thriller cover. Look for something that looks dramatic when set in all caps. A strong sans serif will grab the reader's attention. Here I've chosen Futura Standard Book Mode. Select the text tool and drag to create a small text frame 25mm in width and 12mm in height. Type the word THE 
and set the font to Futura standard book regular size 40 point. Set the tracking to minus 60 and set the text to all caps. Position the frame to the top left of the center white circle at about Y position 60 as shown below. Remember that 60 millimeters, not 60 points or pixels. It can get confusing. Open the swatches panel, that's the window color swatches, and select the new swatch icon at the top right of the panel. Create a new CMYK swatch, setting the percentages to the following values, C19, M98, Y89 and K10. Click OK and set the text to this new red swatch. Now you've got a swatch there that will stay there while you're working on this document. Create a second larger text frame using the text tool about 100 millimeters in width and 26 millimeters in height. Type winter and set the font to Futura standard book regular size 86 tracking to 80 and set the text to all caps. Now you'll notice I'm using um, the text frame tool, not the artistic text tool. You want that in a, in a text frame. Select the layer with winter written in it. Now place your skull image in a layer above it and then drag it down to fill the word winter using the winter text as a mask. Very tricky. Now that skull image you'll find in the downloads folder. Or you could put anything you like in the background, I guess. You might need to double click in the text to directly select the image and right click in Windows or Control click Mac OS to transform and rotate to get the image oriented correctly in the text. Maneuver winter on the front cover, positioning it just below the first text frame as shown below. Make sure the text boxes are positioned properly so they balance on the page. So you want that centered, the word winter, and you'll see that it falls under the word the. The peak of the W is just under the T of the word the. Create a third text frame, about 100 millimeters in width and 35 in height, and type killer into the frame and set the font to Futura standard. Size 115, tracking to minus 40 and set the text to all caps. Set the font color to that one we created before, that dark red. Position the frame just below the winter text frame as shown with the, the um, sharp point of, first point of the W pointing right into the middle of the K of the killer word. So you can see that's balanced nicely there. As a final touch, Select this text frame and go to Effects Outer Shadow. Introduce a very subtle drop shadow to the killer text by setting the mode to normal, opacity to 25% and set the radius to 3 millimeters or 35 points. It's almost invisible, but it is there. It's very faint. Now select the killer text frame you just created and go to Edit, Copy and Edit Paste. Adjust the font weight to light condensed, size 48, tracking 90, align center and font color to white. Adjust the text to Jack Vicious. That's my um, one of the characters in one of my books. You'll need to change the font size to compensate. Position the frame towards the bottom of the page at Y position 167. You can go to FX, Outer Shadow as before, and increase the opacity of the shadow to 65% and size to 5mm. You can see we've just got a slightly fainter dark shadow behind the word Jack Vicious. Step 6. Finally, create a tagline for the front cover by selecting the Type tool and creating a text frame about 20 millimeters in width and 17 millimeters in height. Position this frame at the top right corner of the page as shown below. Type an isolated cabin in the woods, paragraph break, a family seeking reclusion, paragraph break, and a killer on the loose, and set the text to a line right. 
Set the font to Futura Standard Book regular size 15 point and leading to 18 point. Highlight the first two lines of the text and set the font colour to black. Set the font colour of the final line to the red that we generated before. Almost there. The front of your cover is complete and it's looking great. Now's the time to make any minor adjustments to the layout until you're happy with the outcome. Once you're happy, you can start putting together the rest of the cover. Now if you just want an ebook cover, that's exactly what you want. There it is. Just export that and you've got as a PNG and you've got your ebook cover. Okay, we're halfway there. Expand your cover is section four. Now if you want to take a break, now's a good time because we're only halfway there. So let's carry right on now. It might be a good idea to duplicate page one of your document in order to keep a copy of the front cover alone. In fact, it's a good idea to actually save your work at this point and then go to File and Save As and save the entire document as a file with a different name, i.e. front page only. Then come back to this document and carry right along. To make a duplicate of your existing page one, click on page one and then click on duplicate page. You'll see it in the panel there on the left hand side. Just duplicate the page. And there you have page one and page two exactly the same. You can see them in the left hand panel there. Continuing right along, click page two of the document to bring it up on screen. Now I just double click it usually to make sure I've got it. Select the document setup from the selection panel. Now you go up to the top, select document setup. You know where that is? Yes. Go up to the top, select document setup from the selection panel and click once on page two of the document to select it. In Spread Setup, you will see two spreads, Spread 1 and Spread 2. Check Selected Spreads and it should highlight Spread 2, Page 2, or simply select Page 2. Now navigate to the Control Panel and adjust the width of the page to 276 millimeters. This will allow for a back cover at the same width as the front cover. 130 millimeters plus a 16 millimeter spine. Now note if you haven't got all of those layers in there locked, lock them now or, or go back and lock them before because you've got to move that in a moment and if they're not locked you'll leave them bits of it behind and it becomes a real mess. Navigate to the control panel and adjust the width of the page to 276. Now I'm just repeating myself here. This will allow for a back cover at the same width as the front cover plus a 16 millimeter width spine. Repeating the same thing or select page 2 and control click on the page. The spread properties option will pop up where again you can click on spread properties and change it to 276. Select page 2, control click on the page, the spread properties option will pop up, enter the measurement and your page will look like this. So there's always more than one way to achieve the same thing. I've probably just confused you. Unlock all the layers in the layers panel. Select all the elements on the page by selecting all the layers. Using the Move tool, move them along to the right until the image frames meet the edge of the right hand bleed. Relock your layers. You can see I've got it neatly there, right along on the bleed on the top, bottom and right hand side. From the left hand ruler, right over on the left there, pull out a vertical guide to 130 millimeters to mark the left edge of the spine. 
pull out a second guide to 65mm marking out the centre point of the back cover. You can also pull out guides to 138mm and 122mm to mark out the centre point of the spine and the right hand margin of the back cover. You can see the markers as you drag the bar. Place your cursor on the left hand ruler and hold and drag to the right. Go to view and lock all guides. So you lock them in place. If you don't get that right to start with, just fiddle about until you do. It's fairly straightforward really. Now, design the spine. We're up to step 5 and we're getting there. In this tutorial, we'll, we will be creating a spine with a contrasting colour to the rest of the cover. Therefore, it's very important that the spine's dimensions on the artwork match the dimensions of the printed and bound spine exactly. When creating your own artwork for print, be sure to ask your printer to give you an accurate width for your spine before creating your cover art. Or if you can go to somewhere like KDP and some of the other online printers, they often have calculators where you can put in the number of pages you have and it will return your spine width. Return to the Layers panel and lock all the existing layers. Create a new layer, renaming it as Spine Artwork. Move this layer to sit below the typography layer and above the front cover artwork layer. Select the Rectangle tool and drag the Create a Frame 16mm in width that sits between the guides marking out the edges of the spine. Extend the length of the frame so it extends to the top and bottom bleeds. Send the stroke colour to none and the fill colour to the red you created in the swatches panel previously. Same numbers. Now you can see I've got it clearly set out there. That's what you're aiming for. Select the picture frame tool and drag to create an image frame 16mm in width as before and 58mm in height. Position the frame at the bottom of the spine, resting the bottom edge on the edge of the bleed. Set the box colour to transparent if it's not already the default. Select the box you have just placed. and You can see the big red arrow pointing at it there. Go to File, Place and select our Skulls image again, as we used earlier for the front cover. The image should fill the rectangle. You'll notice the blue outline of the image over the spine marker box you just created. No image yet. Now you can see the skulls in there. Select the Transparency tool. That's the wine glass on the left side. Select the image in its layer panel. With the blue frame showing, place the pointer exactly on the bottom of the rectangle at the centre point and you'll see a dot and a green vertical line appear. With a dot on the bottom intersection of the vertical and horizontal lines, carefully click and drag the marker towards the top of the rectangle. The red background will appear and you will slowly move it toward the top of that frame. So you can see in the image there, the skull is fading towards the spine colour. Step 2 continued. Select the image frame and edit, copy, edit, paste before shortening the length of the frame to about 25mm and positioning at the top of the spine. Switch the angle of the gradient to minus 90 degrees so the image fades downwards. You can see the image there. Top and bottom of the spine. In the Layers panel, lock the Spine Artwork layer and unlock the Typography layer. Select the Type tool, in a text frame, not an artistic text frame, but a text frame at the top. That's the one with the letter T in it. Create a text frame 8mm in height and 45mm in width. 
type Jack Vicious or the author name that you want to put in there and set the font to Futura Standard Medium Condensed Size 25 point and in character set tracking to 90 all caps and font color to white. Select the text frame now and control click or to transform or rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise which is much more simpler than clicking and controlling and carrying on. You've got the box selected just go up to the top right hand side there along the top and rotate or down in the transform studio I should stay right at the bottom just rotate at 90 degrees counterclockwise position the text frame centrally on the spine in either case you've got the word Jack Vicious along the spine now note here if I can give you an aside in some countries that's facing the other way in some countries it's facing the way you see it there alter the text to winter killer the font weight is light and tracking to zero you may need to extend the length of the text frame to accommodate the text position the frame centrally on the spine just below the author's name so you can see where they are that's fairly straightforward you've got Jack Vicious the winter killer sitting on the spine to those measurements now we're up to step six we're getting there. Create a back cover. Your cover's starting to look more complete and more complex. Now all that's left to do is put together the design for the front cover. Return to the layers panel and lock the typography layer. Unlock the image layer. Select the picture frame tool and drag to create a frame 130 millimeters in width and 102 in height. Position the frame so that it covers the top half of the back cover, meeting the edges of the bleed at the top and the left. You may notice I've created a group called images for the cover images used. Go to file and place and select the winter trees image we used earlier for the front cover. Arrange the image proportionally in the frame. Go to Transparency. Position the marker dot at the top bleed line. That should make no image will be visible. Now select and drag the position dot downwards and slowly expose the image until you're satisfied. And you can see where I've got the dot there. It's most of the way down. Select the image frame and Command C and Command V. Copy and paste it to create a duplicate of the image and frame. Click and drag the frame to the lower half of the page and flip vertical. If the image is slightly misplaced, it shouldn't be, but if it is, maneuver this second image frame to the bottom of the back cover, allowing the top edge to meet the bottom edge of the first image frame. You can see how I've got it positioned there. Very neat. Step 2. In the Layers panel, lock the image layer. Create a new layer, naming it as Back Cover Artwork. Position this below the Typography layer and above the Spine Artwork layer. Remaining on the Back Cover Artwork layer, select the Ellipse tool and holding the Shift key, Drag to create a perfect circle 113 millimeters in diameter. Set the stroke to none and the fill to white. With the shape selected, click Transparency tool, that's the wine glass, and center dot in the shape. Go to the top left nav bar and set the type to radial. Click on the oval shape just to the right of type radial. It displays a selection interface. Now go to the top right of the color display and set the color to white. Go back to the type, oval settings interface and drag the slider all the way to the right. You can see how I've got it there. Center the circle shape on the back cover, resting the left edge against the left hand margin and the right edge against the 122mm guideline. 
you can see it's almost perfectly centered there. Well, it should be perfectly centered. You'll need to place a barcode on the page if you're intending to sell the book in shops and you have your barcode or one will be created for you. Create a white frame using the rectangle frame tool and file place a generated barcode. I've included one with this. It's one of my barcodes. If you want to look it up, you'll find one of my books. Ensure the barcode image is large enough to be scanned with ease and don't crop the code too closely around the edges in case any of the card code's data becomes illegible. I made this one 20 by 45. It's a genuine barcode from one of my books. Look it up if you like. Hey, buy a copy. Now I also created a second frame just below the barcode, setting the colour to that red that we created. It's a suitable place to insert pricing for the books using the type tool. OK, lock the back cover artwork layer and unlock the typography layer. Select the ellipse tool and holding shift drag to create a circle shape 80 millim 88 millimetres in diameter. You can see there, set the stroke and fill colour to none and position the circle centrally on the back cover, right over the white circle. Convert the circle to a text frame. Select the type tool and type the book's blurb, setting the font to Futura standard medium size 12 point, leading to 14.4 and align center and the font color to black. You can highlight the first few lines of the blurb and make them slightly bigger, around 13 point, and pull out the first line in bold, bold and a red swatch. What a mouthful. If you want your text on the back page to conform to the circle you draw, do the following. Draw your circle of 88mm, go to Layers, Convert to Text Frame and enter your text. Just about there guys. Export your book cover for print. Great work. Your cover artwork is complete and it looks awesome. Now all that's left to do is export the artwork to PDF ready for printing. Go to File Export to open the Export window. Select PDF Print from the Format drop down menu. Name the file and click Save. In the Export PDF window, select PDF for print. In the Area section, select Current Page. You must have the double spread page highlighted as it's the one you want if you've kept a copy of only your front page in page 1. Maybe you saved the front page alone in a separate file. That's OK. You just want this double spread. Include the bleed in the options there and tick the box. Well done. You now have your book cover ready to be sent to the printers. If you choose to print your cover on coated or uncoated paper stock, both of which have their own unique look and tactile feel, communicate with your printer before you send the artwork to print to receive samples and or their advice on paper stock and weight. In this tutorial, we've learned how to create an attention-grabbing, genre-appropriate book cover for a winter crime thriller. The design, crates, the design traits for this genre include a bleak photographic background and high impact sans serif text rendered in bold blood red and bleak monochrome colours. Good use of gradients give the colour a cover a sense of mystery and give the whole cover a blizzard like appearance with pops of cold white light. That's the end of the lesson. Thank you very much for following along so far on this journey. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and any other um, teaching platforms you might find this on. Thank you kindly. Go ahead. Make my day. Subscribe.